It was a cold Friday morning, and I was sitting on the edge of my bed in my apartment in Tallahassee, Florida, during the fall of 2014. My father recently had a stroke. There were several family deaths. I was under financial stress, heartbroken, and my academics were suffering due to a lack of focus, which resulted in me becoming academically ineligible to play football, the sport I love. I thought to myself how far I have fallen from almost reaching my heart's desires. I heard a knock at the door. I got up, walked over, and looked through the peephole. I noticed two familiar individuals, my mother and older sister. After they walked in, they took one good look at me and began to cry. The last time they saw me, I was a strong, 5'8", 183-pound, Division I college football running back. But on that day stood a skinny, 150-pound, broken man. How did I get there? Well, it was a combination of a series of unfortunate events, which included mismanaging time, resources, and talent. I was at rock bottom. I was good at math, but I could not calculate how I was going to get myself out of that predicament. After seeing my mother's and sister's tears, I knew it was time to move forward. But how? In rebuilding my life, I would like to share with you all three key factors that I learned that helped me escape the abyss of rock bottom. Would you like to know what they are? Yes. Yes. <laughs> After analyzing many of the greats, like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, and yes, Dr. Sybil C. Mobley, the founding dean of Florida a &M University School of Business and Industry, I identified three key factors that helped individuals, groups, and businesses change their downward spiral towards rock bottom and allowed them to use rock bottom as a solid foundation. The first key factor was their ability to have a fresh vision of what their lives should look like or potentially become. Could you imagine the NBA if Michael Jordan would have quit after he was cut from his high school basketball team? His millions of fans are grateful for the excitement he brought to the court and the Chicago Bulls organization for the six championships he helped them win. Indeed, Nike is grateful for the billions of dollars they make year after year <laughs> selling his Jordan brand sneakers that he had a fresh vision of who he wanted to become. Sitting on the edge of my bed in my apartment in Tallahassee, I had no vision. My recently failed past was like a dark cloud over me. The faithful visit of those who love me, my firm belief in God, and myself helped me develop a new vision. I decided to see something deeper and more meaningful in my situation. Being a firm believer in God in retrospect, I see that God was pruning me like a tree to help set me up for healthy and rapid growth. The second key factor was understanding energy and enhancing my emotional intelligence. I discovered this when I was shifting from a survival mindset to a thriving mindset. To enhance my emotional intelligence, I had to understand the energy trends and transitions within myself, which subsequently allowed me to notice the energy trends within others that were consistent across the board amongst many at a high percentage of the time. Back then, when I was in survival mode, I used to think that individuals could see through my poker face and knew that I was going through a tough time. Now, I see that was more indicative of how I felt about myself, not how the world viewed me. When I shifted to a thriving mindset, I noticed that I viewed the world as limitless, and I would abandon thoughts of scarcity, which helped me create more solutions that led to more opportunities for success along my journey. As I continued to master energy, I noticed what individuals would call a heightened sixth sense or a strong gut feeling. This is important because simply, we do not walk this earth alone. 
other individuals inhabit the planet as well. And guess what? We sometimes must interact with others. <laughs> if you live long enough to encounter individuals people consider good or bad based off their actions or moral conduct, unlike touch, where you can label it as warm, hot, or cold, or smell being pleasant, unpleasant, or not having a scent, as well as many other descriptive words, energy does not have as many labels for the things that you encounter. The easiest way to group energy is positive, negative, or indifferent based off the experiences that you've had in life or the learned experiences you have listening to the stories of someone else from their life. Energy comes in different levels of frequency. Whether that's low or high, you must have an instant, immediate, or delayed response to that energy to allow it to have a positive impact on your, your life or negate it from having a negative impact on your life. The third key factor was executing in a timely manner. When I think back to the 1974 highlights of the heavyweight championship fight between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, it taught me patience and increased my awareness on when to act. George Foreman was the bigger and stronger man in that fight, but Muhammad had more stamina and agility. He was able to tire out Foreman to deliver an eighth round knockout to regain the heavyweight title of the world. <laughs> when I received a fresh vision on how I wanted to make it out of my situation, I knew the game plan would have been pointless if I did not execute on it. In my last semester of my bachelor's degree program, I had to take six classes and work three jobs in order to maintain the normal matriculation timetable of my degree, despite the setbacks I had in 2014. This was important because a few of the classes that were offered that semester would not have been offered again until the following spring. That would have pushed my graduation back nine months. Wow. It's safe to say I'm glad I put in the extra time and energy then to save myself time in the future. I learned the hard way that some opportunities had a lifespan, and failure to execute in a timely manner could lead to you forfeiting your chance or adding additional time to you reaching your goal. At the School of Business and Industry at Florida and University, Dr. Sybil C. Mobley used to always say a quote from Seneca, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Strive not to be perfect, but a constant state of evolution, a never-ending process of improvement. Thank you.